Hey everyone and welcome to today's Gale Forest Twins episode. Today we are in the garden. Now if you've been following along on Instagram you might have actually seen uh, me and Captain Trey who you guys also may have been seeing on social media. Captain Trey was our tournament captain. Exactly and so this is his family's land and his garden. We have been spending some time once again you may notice we are landlocked and we are having a blast being landlocked. Like I said, being landlocked is my definition of vacation. So today we are going to give you guys an amazing, beautiful garden tour of this really awesome garden. We have some squash, zucchini, We're gonna do a little bit of harvesting, tomatoes, pruning, a little bit of pruning. Just kind of taking care of it. I would call it a gardening housekeeping type day. Sounds and then something right. that I do wanna do later on is I actually have a balcony, me and my husband at our house, we have a balcony garden over, we live in South Florida pretty far east close to the water so I have a balcony garden one day we need to show you but for today we're gonna show you the garden of the Claus family. My name's Amanda. My name is Emily and welcome to our channel Gale Forest Twins. It looks like the chickens wanted to come over and say hello. They're in there, we call it the channel, the chicken tunnel. So the chickens see us out here, they wanted to come check us out. Mara is definitely chicken curious, but she'll leave them alone. Mara, come on. Of course, we have to start in the tunnel. So between Emily and I, Amanda speaking here, I would say that I have more of the green thumb, do I, Emily? I don't know how fair that is, but yeah, you definitely are pretty good. You got a green thumb for sure. So this here and here is, I would call it, what do you want to call it something? This is the spaghetti squash tunnel, mostly. Mostly. So a lot of this is spaghetti squash. And did you know, fun fact, spaghetti squash is considered a winter squash. I hit my head on the squash. So we do need to get some of the bags for these. To support so, them. But Amanda, what, why is it called It's called squash? a winter squash because did you know that once these spaghetti squashes are ready to harvest, they can last for like five, four to five months. Meaning, well, if we harvest, let's say in July or August, they're lasting through the winter. That's where the term winter squash comes from. So basically they're shelf stable for an extremely long extremely time. Extremely long time. So we've got a lot of spaghetti squash. You can see this guy's already supported right here. And then we can keep following me down the tunnel. We have on the left hand side, these here are the Better Boy tomatoes. So Better Boy tomatoes, you can kind of see them down here. These are gonna be great tomatoes for sandwiches and burgers, they're slicing they're tomatoes. They're slicing tomatoes. They get tomatoes, nice and big. Which I have two, two um, Better Boy tomatoes in my balcony garden, but they're only about this big. And it's summer in South Florida, so we'll see how everything does. Yes. Up here, we're in Georgia, the weather's much milder. Yes, but hold on Amanda, I wanted to check out this amazing, I think just, I don't know what, this amazing art of nature. I mean, look at that, Amanda. So these guys have, these are called tendrils right here. And these tendrils, you can see, they are grabbing on to support the plant. So you've got all these little tendrils and all these flowers and leaves opening up, which will eventually turn into more squash. I mean, look at this tendril going from here all the way, you see it? Here, yep. all the way to here. It's really, truly incredible that literally a, a plant a capable of a that. Plant a plant is capable. And then down here, these guys right here are some pole beans. These still, were just planted. Just really planted. Small. Freshly planted, still pretty small. And Emily on the other side right there though, this is our zucchini and the zucchini is, I mean, Go like crazy, Emily. How many zucchinis did you harvest the other day? Oh my goodness, maybe eight and like huge ones. See that big one back left? Probably eight of them in just every day, every single day. Right here, these are going to be bush beans. So fun fact, it's pretty self-explanatory, but the bush beans you can see are kind of creating like a bush. a bush. And then what we showed you earlier was pole beans. So pole beans are gonna kind of grow up just a like on a little like trellis, yes. like pole bean, bush bean, fun fact. And then Emily, the corn is behind you. I think you need to tell the corn All right, story. I got a really cool corn story, guys. Here you can see corn, which I'm really, really excited about. First of all, I think corn is so a beautiful plant as it grows. Secondly, the story. All right, so. We had a bag of deer feed, which was corn. Then we had a bag of soil. Then we had a mouse. And this mouse, they were both open near each other, got into the corn, the corn, the deer feed, the deer feed, ate it, ate it or 
like, I don't know, carried it into its mouth, like kind of, you know, hamsters do that. And then it got into the soil and it dropped the corn into the soil and the corn sprouted in the bag of soil. And it was like, you know what? Let's plant the sprouts. In honor of the mouse, we need to be planting this corn. Clearly, it was meant to be that we should have corn. So here we have this amazing, I mean, it's as tall as you. Corn so far. I know. I mean, I'm for perspective. A lot of people ask us on social media if we're tall and they think we're like five, six, five, seven. I'm like, five, I'm almost five, four. So for perspective, this corn's probably almost six foot now. And here we have the jalapeno peppers. So all these guys here are peppers. This guy needs support right here. Peppers tend to do better with supports. He's always on the ground. So we're gonna definitely get a support for that guy. So we have a bunch of jalapeno peppers here. And we also have some buds and flowers coming in. So right there, that's our first like real flower. I'm gonna go ahead, come in here and pinch off the flower. So what people like to do and what is good for the plant, which I do it as well, is you pinch off the flowers and the buds. Here you go, Emily, here's your flower. Thank you, Amanda, how sweet of you. And the reason you pinch off the flowers and buds is to just really, right there, these are all little flowers, is, is really just to help the plant continue to focus on growing a strong root system, grow strong branches, and grow tall, especially when it's young, so that it can grow into a nice, big, mature plant that can support a lot of peppers. So pinching off early, basically what it does is it allows the plant to just really establish itself, and then later in the season, you're gonna get more and more peppers. This plant has never had any of its buds or flowers pinched, so I'm just gonna kinda come in here, like that's a little bud and just pinch off the ones that are big enough to grab. If they're not big enough to grab, I don't want to damage the plant. Here we've got, see that guy right there? That guy right there hanging down. Just kind of use my nail to pinch him off. And we can come over here. And I'm just gonna kind of reach in here and pinch off the buds and the flowers. Here we've got like two. And this way the plant can just focus on being a plant. And then we will get, the idea is you get more and more peppers. We've made it to the row of zucchinis. And do we have a lot of zucchinis to harvest? That is for sure. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is not only prune, but yeah, also so harvest. By pruning, we are pitching, pinching, pinching off. I'm talking about jalapenos over here. We are cutting off any of the yellow leaves or what's on the floor. And we're gonna go put it, and we'll go put it on the channel. All right, Explain so we have the tunnel, the tunnel AKA chicken tunnel. And they will eat this. So I'm gonna just drop this on the top there and they love it. They'll sit there and peck at it and pull it into their channel. Yep, there they are, eating it away. This one's kind of dead. I don't know if they're gonna, oops, sorry guys. You spooked them, Amanda. Sorry, my bad. So on the left there, we have two barred rocks and we named those cookies and cream. And that one right there, the red one, that is strawberry. There's two of those red ones and we named one strawberry and one raspberry. Those chickens are gonna be so happy to get those zucchini leaves. Made it to the Roma tomatoes. Here we have a few small tomatoes, clearly not ripe yet. Here's some more. And these tomatoes are gonna make for really, really good salsa, tomato sauce, things basically other than slicing because they are smaller and they don't have huge as many seeds. seeds. And so when with Roma tomatoes, we really just wanna only prune anything that looks sick or is touching the, the ground. ground. Because once again, touching the ground just means no airflow. We're gonna lead to disease. I'm gonna put this here, I'll yeah, put it somewhere else. Yeah, don't put that else. in there. I won't, so those. anything that's really just touching the ground is what we're going to prune. Check out these beautiful flowers, purple flowers. Now on theme with the fruit, for any of you that don't garden and don't know what this is, I'll give you a few seconds to think about a purple, I guess vegetable, not fruit. A purple vegetable. Uh, eggplant might be considered. Hold on, Emily. I think eggplant's considered a right, fruit. We just gave it away. Oh, eggplant. sorry. <laughs> eggplant. Purple flowers. Purple eggplant. I'm really excited about uh, that eggplant. Eggplant, I believe, is considered a fruit because it has seeds. Oh, yeah, and so is so tomatoes. technically, it's a so fruit. So technically, squash is a fruit too. Technically, I believe it is. What's the one about cucumber? That's a fruit. Really? Yeah. So then, do we have vegetables in here? Corn. Corn. Corn's a starch. Corn's a starch. This is a fruit garden, isn't it? 
I suppose so. <laughs> At the very end of this row, we have chestnut trees. And once again, if you guys have been following along on Instagram and a lot of that short form TikTok type content, you may have seen us planting some chestnut trees. And what's super cool about these trees is that they're all grown from a seed from Captain Trey Claus himself. And if you want to purchase, not one, you can't purchase one, you could in theory purchase one, but that would not be ideal. You should purchase them in threes and plant them in threes for the purpose of pollination. You guys definitely can. Details will be in description box. You can get them from Captain Trey Claus himself with chestnuts direct. These awesome, beautiful chestnut trees. There's a few over here. Yeah, look, those are all trees back there. And there's a ton more. Do you guys see those white? those white tubes back there those are grow tubes on more chestnut trees and like I said you may have seen some of that content about grow tubes as well that's been on Instagram guys check out this squash right, scoot all the way Amanda let's get it on we video. just found that I do not think is ever going to come out unless we chop it up and that is really cool. so I think we need to keep track we should name this guy and see how big he gets before because you're not, I mean, moving the whole trellis, that is pretty cool. The last thing we're gonna be doing today is spraying all these plants, this whole garden down with neem oil. Now, neem oil, Amanda. Ex neem oil <laughs> is going to protect against funguses and pests and spider mites and anything that might want to basically eat our plants, like right here. You could see something went in there and ate that. So spraying with neem oil is going to help protect the garden in order to help us produce the highest yield of fruit as possible. We hope you enjoyed our little garden tour, garden housekeeping episode. We still have quite a bit more work to do. I still have a little bit of pruning to do before Emily gets down to the neem oil project. We hope you guys enjoyed watching. Don't forget we are now on Patreon as well, patreon.com forward slash Gale Force Twins, where we have exclusive content extended episodes, behind the scenes episodes, and also access to these YouTube videos. This video that you're watching right now on YouTube was on Patreon a week ago. So you get early access to our long form episodes as well. In the meantime, we hope you get out there, have fun and stay safe.